Back in 2014, Intel released their Haswell lineup of CPUs. And naturally, a lot of gamers were eyeing up the i5s in this range for their next gaming PC. This i5-4460 would have set gamers back by $180 US, but 9 years on, in 2023, is going for a mere £4 on the used market. And this begs the question, can you actually game on a £4 CPU? And there's only one way to find that out, and that's the benchmark it, which is obviously what I've done. This Haswell i5 was built on the 22 nanometer process and it has four cores, four threads and six megabytes of L3 cache which is shared between its four cores. Back then the i5-4460 would have been an excellent gaming option to pair with GPUs like the GTX 760 and 770 and even a year on from that the GTX 960 and 970 as well. This is thanks to its excellent single core performance, especially for the time, and it still kind of holds up today in terms of single thread performance. Back in 2014, for consumer platforms, multi-threading wasn't really Intel's concern. They didn't really have any competition in the consumer CPU space at all, until 2017 when AMD brought along AMD Ryzen, which was an incredible success for AMD. And this therefore prompted Intel to actually make CPUs with higher core counts on their consumer sockets. Because of this, a lot of newer games will use at least eight threads and this is why this CPU is so cheap. It's not really that viable anymore and before I even get into any of the testing, I can firmly say that this CPU will not cut it in 2023 with a lot of the games. But despite that little disclaimer, can you get away with just four threads? To find out if this £4 CPU is actually any good in 2023, I've put it onto a makeshift test bench which has a Gigabyte H81-M S2H LGA1150 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of dual rank, dual channel, DDR3 memory running at 1600 MHz, and a 500 gigabyte SATA SSD. The GPU I've used for the comparison today is the AMD RX Vega 56 as I thought this would have been a pretty sensible GPU for this CPU without maxing it out too much like something like my RTX 3080 that just would have been totally overkill for this CPU. Also AMD GPUs have lower CPU overhead as well. For comparison purposes I've compared the i5-4460's performance to my regular test bench's i5-12400F. The specs for both of these machines will be listed in the description below, so let's see how this 9 year old i5-4460 gets on in some games in 2023. Kicking off the gaming benchmark today with Cyberpunk 2077 and this is probably the game that surprised me the most and that is because there is only a 4% performance delta between the 4460 and the 12400F which is a big surprise in my opinion. Setting to Cyberpunk to the low preset for obvious reasons, but I kept the textures on high and this netted 54 FPS on average with a 1% low of 34 FPS for the i5-4460. Switching up to the 12400F and this sees the average frame rate jump up to 56 FPS on average which is not that big of an improvement if I'm honest, but the 1% low did go up by 7 frames to 42 FPS so that's a nice improvement with the 1% lows there, but with the averages there's not that big of a difference. But at the end of the day, Cyberpunk is playable on a £4 CPU, which uh, is a sentence which I thought I'd never say. Fortnite has notoriously just not played very well on 4-thread CPUs, but to be fair, I don't think that trend is necessarily true anymore. Setting it to the DirectX 12 API, which does help with CPU overhead, and I set all the settings down to low for obvious reasons today, and the i5-4460 netted 124 FPS on average with a 1% low of 50 FPS. Is it the most ideal performance in the world? No, not necessarily, but is it playable? Depending on who you ask, probably. And this is where the shocker kicks in, because moving to the 12400F, the average frame rate jumps up to 236 and the 1% low jumps up to a whopping 183. So if you want to play Fortnite, I don't recommend a 4 thread CPU, even though it's technically playable if you've got one in an old machine lying around for instance. Rainbow Six Siege is another game that can be CPU demanding depending on the settings and the GPU you're using. Here I set it to the low preset because I wanted to stress both the CPUs as well as I can and on average the 4460 got 260 FPS 
with a 1% low of 125. Moving to the 12400F sees a performance uplift of 79% with the average frame rate going up to 369 with a 1% low of 274. So the i5-4460 can certainly play Rainbow Six Siege, but this is just the performance you will be losing out, which is granted in all fairness. Next game up is the newest game, and that is Counter-Strike 2, and this is probably going to be a staple in my CPU benchmarking videos because it is very CPU demanding, more so than GPU demanding. I set it to the low preset here, and on average, the 4460 got just 97 FPS, with 57 FPS for the 1% low. Switching up to the 12400F, and this sees an improvement of 175% with the average frame rate, going up to 267 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 113. So, this is sort of the performance you will be losing out if you're using an old Haswell CPU like this, if you want to play Counter-Strike 2. So I'd recommend something much newer, maybe depending on what sort of performance levels you're looking for, maybe sort of 10th or 11th general higher perhaps. Last game up today can be pretty CPU demanding in its own right and that is Forza Horizon 5. Here I set it to the medium preset and the i5-4460 netted 92 FPS on average with a 1% low of 56. So this isn't bad performance at all, especially when it's paired with a GPU like the Vega 56. But you are losing out on 21% performance because the 12400F got 111 FPS on average with a 1% low of 91 FPS. So this is sort of the performance that you would be losing with an i5-4460 but I think 92 FPS on average with a 1% low of 56. I think that's totally playable if you ask me. Getting into the synthetic benchmarks now and starting off with Cinebench R23. For the single core performance benchmark, the i5-4460 got 792, which for the time in 2014 wasn't too bad. But in the past seven or eight years, we've seen how much better CPUs have got at single thread performance, as the i5-12400 got around 1500, which is, almost double over the 4460. Moving over to the multi-core now, and this is where the i5-4460 just falls apart. It scored just a mere 3036, and when you compare this to over the 1100, which the 12400 got, it does look pretty 2014 Intel-ish at that point, and if you're going to be playing a game that's going to utilize more than four threads, this is where the 4460 just absolutely falls apart. CPU-Z is up next as it does have a built-in benchmark feature and this is the first time I've used it in any sort of benchmarking capacity. For the single core test the i5-4460 got 370 and we can see the development in single thread performance of CPUs as the i5-12400F got 662 here. Moving over to the multi-core and yet again Cinebench kind of unmasked this. The i5-4460 didn't perform too great in this test, getting just 1,389, which uh, does look pretty funny compared to the 4,796, which the i5-12400 got. So, so if you want to do any sort of multi-thread tasks on the i5-4460, don't consider it at all. It's not going to be good for it. So I'm not going to lie, this Haswell CPU has actually impressed me quite a lot. I was under the assumption that full threads was just simply not enough for modern gaming, which may be partially true because across the five games tested today, the modern i5-12400F increased the average FPS by a whopping 87%, and the 1% lows also followed the same trend, and they more than doubled, increasing by an astonishing 117 FPS over the 4460. This means that the i5-4460 was just absolutely holding back the Vega 56 in basically every game tested today and the one that suffered the least from the CPU bottleneck weirdly was Cyberpunk even though that game's got a lot of AI in it so that, that's a bit weird if I'm honest. And Fortnite was even playable on a 4-thread CPU as well which is quite surprising as from my experience Unreal Engine 5 is very taxing on the CPU, it will saturate at least 8 threads, but I mean Fortnite was playable on this CPU which is pretty surprising to me if I'm honest. Even though the first time I did try to load into a game I didn't even reach the spawn island, it was just, I was just in the air and textures were just loading really weirdly for the first part of the first game. But after that it was totally fine the performance even though the 1% low was not particularly great, but it is still something I would consider playable.
after a while. I would probably say the most disappointing game here was Counter-Strike 2 and this is the newest game in the list today but it just lagged behind. There wasn't any major performance problem like it wasn't stuttering all over the place or anything like that. The performance was just on average just not very good at all and you got absolutely obliterated by the 12400F in this game which to be honest is what I was expecting. CS2 has basically been built from the ground up in the uh, in the sort of the back end and the backbone of the game so this is to be expected. So all in all the performance delta between the 4460 and the i5 12400F was pretty much what I was expecting. Maybe I was expecting it to be a bit worse but then again at the end of the day the 4460 only cost £4 so for £4 it did put up quite a decent fight if I'm honest even though it was basically just pegged at 100% all of the time. Judging from the data that I've gathered today and I would have to say for gaming four thread CPUs have gone the way of the dodo. They're not really viable in modern AAA games anymore and I would certainly would not recommend them. I probably wouldn't even recommend a Haswell i7 for the new AAA games. But if you want to play some older esports games like Rainbow Six Siege and I wouldn't recommend it for Fortnite because of the technical issues which I've discussed or if you want to play some of the older Bethesda games and maybe games like Minecraft and stuff like that, this CPU will be totally fine for that. Pair it with something like an RX 570 or RX 580 and I think you've got a somewhat decent budget gaming PC on your hands. If you already have an LGA 1150 motherboard with something like an i3 or a Pentium or something like that and you want a little upgrade just to tide you over in your esports games, I would probably recommend upgrading to something like the i7 4770 or maybe a Xeon equivalent. These CPUs still have a lot of relevancy in 2023 thanks to their AVX2 support and to be fair Haswell has got pretty decent single thread performance considering its age. So if you want a game I'll definitely maybe consider them CPUs if you've only got an LGA 1150 motherboard at the moment. I wouldn't recommend building one of these systems from scratch. If we look on the other side of things though and look at just general office use like Word and web browsing and stuff like that, I have to say this 4460 was incredibly snappy. In all fairness it was a fresh install of Windows which definitely does help things but it was really snappy and it's kind of crazy to see how well this CPU has aged just for business use. So there you go then, you can actually play games on a £4 CPU, relatively okay all things considered, even though I don't necessarily recommend this CPU. If you already have an LGA 1150 motherboard, I would definitely recommend the i7 or maybe the equivalent Xeon as I've said as they have the extra threads. And it's also got an extra 2 megabytes of L3 cache, which will help out with that single thread performance as well. So if you enjoyed this one, there are two benchmarking videos right there, which might be right up your alley. And if you got this far into the video, I'd like to thank you for sticking around so long and maybe even consider asking you for a like if you like the video. With that being said, I'm going to leave this one here and I'll catch you in the next one.